Hey, thanks for stopping by Tony's Cool Tools. If you haven't guessed, we're going to be talking about axes today. That's Fiskars axes. As a former sales manager for Fiskars, I had the pleasure of selling these axes for about 10 years. If you ask any woodhound out there what is his favorite axe, he'll probably tell you Fiskars, or even better yet, he'll say the X27 Fiskars. That's pretty good knowing the brand and the part number. It's similar to Kleenex as opposed to facial tissue. So somebody in the wood yard will probably say, hand me my Fiskar. Fiskar has earned the reputation of a quality product that's durable and affordable. Now I didn't say the most expensive axes on the market, but I did say the best quality. Now prior to starting my channel nine months ago, Chris from In The Woodyard and I did a video on all the Fiskar axes. That was about two years ago. And that's Chris's number one video at 734,000 views. So a lot of people do want to know about Fiskar axes. As I mentioned in previous video, Fiskars is a very old company. It's actually the oldest company in Finland and within the world, there's only a handful of companies that are older than Fiskars. They were established in 1649 and are 374 years old. Now, when they first started, they had a charter that allowed them to make nails, wires, and agricultural products. However, later on in the 1900s, they were the number one sought after plow manufacturer, selling over a million plows in the 1930s. A couple of things to note about the Fiskar Axe. First, they're all made in Finland. They don't ship them out overseas or to Asia. They are made in Finland. The second thing is, everything you see here comes with a lifetime guarantee. And lastly, every single product that you see here comes with a sheath. The axes come with a nice plastic handle sheath to protect the edge from getting damaged or from cutting you. Oh, and by the way, for those of you who didn't know, Fiskar owns the legendary knife company, Gerber Knives. And these axes are the same ones that you see in the Gerber lineup, with the exception of the color. They're usually a lime green, whereas the Fiskars is black and orange or just black. Now I get this question a lot. Why are there two colors in the Fiskar lineup? Orange and black and black. Both of these are X27s, yet one is solid black and one is black and orange. Let me explain. When you sell multiple large companies like Lowe's, Depot, Walmart, and all the other companies, the one thing that all of them want is an exclusivity on your products. That way nobody can copy them. And although there's only one X27, it comes in two different colors. So if you happen to buy the orange and black handled one on Amazon, Home Depot, or Lowe's, or any of the other big box stores, and you go to your farm and ranch store and find the black one, rest assured they're identical. No difference whatsoever. As I mentioned previously, all the axes are manufactured in Finland. These are forged heads with a proprietary grind and a special bevel on these. They are also coated so that it slips out of the metal as opposed to getting stuck in it. And one of the unique things about the Fiskar axe is the overmolded head here so that it doesn't fly off or break off, as you can see here. Fiskar's goal is to have more one-strike splits when you're doing firewood. And the way they accomplish the goal of one-strike splits is with the wedge design here. Most people that look at the Fiskar handle say that it's plastic and it's hollow inside. Yes, it is hollow inside, but this material that it's made out of is called fiber comp. It's actually stronger than metal. And one other characteristic of this fiber comp handle is that it absorbs shock. And all the Fiskar axes have the palm swell or the flared knob here so your hands don't slip off. Let's start out with the X27 regardless of whether it's black or orange and black. It's 36 inches overall and weighs five and a half pounds. And the X27 has perfect weight distribution. Now the power to weight ratio increases your swing speed and multiplies the power. And let me explain that. 
If we use the baseball analogy, the difference between a wooden bat or an aluminum bat. You're much faster with an aluminum bat than the wooden bat. So the bottom line is, the X27 is lightweight and easy to swing. So for additional power, Fiskar designed the splitting maul. Combines two different tools, a wedge and a sledgehammer in one. This happens to be an eight pound sledge. They also make it in a six pound as well. And it has the standard 36 inch handle. When designing this tool, they went to the end users and contractors to find out what they were looking for. A couple of the concerns that the contractors had were, one, they wanted to make sure that the head was pinned so that it didn't fly off when they were working with it. And secondly, they wanted a surface, a sledge surface that was wider than the standard one. This here is about 20% wider than the standard sledge head that you find at your hardware store. And it also has an overstrike protection right over here. Now unlike the Fiskar axes, this particular handle is not hollow. It is a material called isocore and it's used for vibration dampening. And though I like using this mall, it definitely wears you out. The next axe we're going to cover is the X25. It's identical to the X27 as far as all the attributes are concerned, except that it has a 28 inch handle as opposed to a 36 inch handle for somebody who has shorter arms or prefers using a shorter axe. It weighs in at 5.5 pounds and I've talked to a number of people and they prefer the X25 over the X27. I've always wanted to pose a question to the product managers at Fiskars, and that is, when they came out with the numbering system for this, why is an X27 36 inches long and an X25 28 inches long? You would think that it would be an X36 and an X28. So be it. That's what it is. The next two axes we'll be talking about is the X17 and the X15. They're both 23 and a half inches long, and both axes weigh 3.10 pounds. So the difference between these two axes, if you take a look at the profile, one is a splitting axe, one is a chopping axe. The question I always get is, can't you chop with a splitting axe? Yes, you can. You'll be there all day long taking little chunks out. Whereas with the X15 chopping axe, you can get large chunks coming out of the tree. Next on our list is the X11 an ideal axe for doing kindling. It has the wedge type head for splitting firewood into kindling. And the X11 weighs 2.7 pounds. And if I'm felling trees and pounding wedges in, and I don't want to bring my 27 or my 25 Fiskar axe in, I bring the X11. It does an excellent job at pounding wedges in. Now I love carrying a small hatchet in my UTV or my tractor, and the X7 is the perfect hatchet for me. It comes in at 1.7 pounds and it's 14 inches long. But another benefit that I have with this is anytime I'm splitting wood on my axis, I keep this handy. So if I get any of the elm, the stringy, or the hickory wood, this cuts those last fibers. And last on the traditional hatchets is the X5. A nice little cute hatchet that's great for camping or putting in your car for emergencies. It's only 9 inches long and weighs 1.3 pounds. Now next on the list of axes is a hybrid. It's used for clearing brush, and let me explain how. It's a very thin head, if you can take a look right there, and it has a razor sharp hook edge here at the bottom for pulling material towards you and it cuts it at the same time. The handle resembles a traditional axe with the palm swell right over here, but it's very comfortable to hold. You can either choke it up here like this, or you can hold it all the way at the back and get more power when you swing. But it also has the dimple technology on the back so it doesn't chafe your hands or give you calluses. And the other question people have is what are the holes? have no idea, so we usually lie and tell them it's aerodynamic. It goes through the air faster. But I have no idea. 
Though not considered a traditional axe, the Fiskars brush axe is very versatile. Ask any sportsman out there, especially trappers or anyone camping. This particular head design is sharpened on both sides. Very, very razor sharp when you get it. So you can cut saplings or vines or even do kindling for your campsites with something like this. It only weighs one and a quarter pounds. This head is nine inches, but the overall length is 18 inches. So it fits in your backpack real easily or in the back of your vehicle. And I'll give you a demonstration momentarily how this works. So if you like the Fiskars brush axe, you're gonna like its big brother, the XA23. It's basically the same head design, only in a longer handle. This is 35 and a half inches long. It weighs two pounds. It still has the nine inch head, but as you can tell, the beak is a little bit different here. So it hooks wood or saplings or vines very easily and cuts them overhead. And you've got more power because it's like a baseball bat. Although I have some bad news for you, you can't purchase this XA23 in the US. You can find it in the UK and possibly in Australia, but you're not gonna find it in the US. And if you do find it, it's usually around $100 because of the shipping. But it is an awesome tool and I'll show you momentarily. So the small brush ax is ideal for clearing anything that you can reach down low. However, if I wanted to reach above my head, the XA23 comes in real handy. So as you can see, the XA23 did a great job at quickly clearing this brush. The last thing I wanted to talk about was sharpening an ax. Very similar to chainsaw, very few people know how to do it. Fiskars has come out with a jig. All you need to do is pass the blade through a few times and you get razor sharp again. Let me show you. As you can see, I've used this ax previously, but all I need to do to true it up is just bring it back a few times. So let's give it the paper test. Now naturally it's a wide edge, not like a knife, but let's see what we can do. I'd say that was pretty doggone sharp. So I hope you have a better understanding of the Fiskars lineup of axes and brush axes as well. And they put a lot of effort into making a great product. And it shows. I hope you found this video informative and entertaining, and if so, Please like, share, and subscribe. And give me a thumbs up as well. And pass it forward. Make the world a better place. And don't be a tool. Watch Tony's Cool Tools. Until I see you next time, have a great one.